Hey guys, what's up? It's Apple Critics from AppleCritics.com. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the iOS 13 hands-on. Uh, so iOS 13 has been long awaited and much anticipated, and the day is finally here. So earlier in the day, Apple announced iOS 13 along with the new Watch OS and the iPad OS along with the new Mac Pro, but everybody was focused in on iOS 13. And of course we did have that leak a few days earlier that leaked a few of the features, but what we got with iOS 13 was what we wanted and much more. Uh, so it's just that little icing on the cake. Uh, so in this video, I'm gonna give you a brief walkthrough of all the features and just giving you some hope for iOS 13 and showing you why you wanna get iOS 13 on your device. Now, before you get all your hopes up, I'd like to say the supported devices for iOS 13. And those supported devices include the following. So the iPhone XS, iPhone XS Max, the iPhone XR, the iPhone X, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, the iPhone SE, and finally, the iPod Touch 7 generation, which was just uh, announced and just released uh, within the last week or so. So if you do have an iPhone 6 or iPhone 6S, sorry you guys did not make the cut. You'll have to uh, get a newer device or get the iPhone uh, 11 uh, to get iOS 13. So you cannot use this iOS 13 uh, beta one on your device if you wanted to take a look at it. So now before I go ahead and get into this video, I like to verify that I am on iOS 13 and I am using a iPhone 10S. Uh, so what we can do is just go into settings and once we're in settings, we can go to general. And then once you go into general, we can go into about. You'll see that it says 13.0 for the software version. So now to start off with a feature that everybody is looking forward to. So that definitely has to be dark mode. So if we go into settings and then we go into display and brightness, you're gonna see that we have a new tab that shows appearance. So you have two options. We have light and then we have dark. And then we have automatic as well. And then we have the normal brightness settings, including brightness, true tone, and night shift. But what everybody has been looking forward to is that dark mode. So all you have to do is just tap on dark. And now you can see that we do have that dark mode. So it looks spectacular. Uh, so what we can do uh, is take a look at the other settings. So you can see it's in dark mode and you can see everything about it. Now what we can do is go back to our home screen. So now what we can do is go into some dark mode supported apps that include the App Store. So you can see that the App Store is in dark mode. I uh, can see that it does look pretty good. It's a nice uh, change and it looks pretty good overall. And now what we can do is go into another app. Uh, so let's say for example, we go into iMessage. So this is what iMessage looks like when you first go into it. You can see that we have the dark mode. We could enter in who we want to send the message to. Then you can see you have the dark keyboard right here. So it looks pretty good overall. It's nice to see uh, that it has dark mode support in the iMessage app. Now we can go into Apple Music as well. So you can see that we do have dark mode and it looks pretty good uh, as well. I can't really complain about it. Now we can also go into the contacts app and that's what it looks like when you want to add a new contact. Uh, so you can see that those apps get the dark mode. Now apps like the calendar, uh, photos and weather don't get it uh, because those are just some of the standard apps. But it's really nice to see that there's some dark mode support for some great apps. So now to access dark mode, you can also go into the control center. So you can just swipe down. And then we have to just 3D touch on this brightness toggle right here. And then once you 3D touch on it, you're gonna see that you have all these options. So uh, we have the appearance dark, we have the night shift off and you have the true tone on. As uh, so you could just uh, switch between dark and light. So now you can see everything is back to normal. Then if you go into Apple Music, you can see that it's light. But what we can actually do is just uh, switch it back to dark mode just like that. So it's just a quick toggle in the control center and it's just really nice overall. Now we can go back into display and brightness under dark mode and we can turn automatic on. Uh, so we can say, have these options. So it would say light until sunset or have a custom schedule when you want to implement uh, the dark mode. So once it's past a certain time, you can have dark mode automatically scheduled. So it's really nice in that way. Now in terms of face ID, it is now 30% faster. So that's a nice touch that it's uh, faster uh, than it already was. So it's just nice to just look at your phone and automatically it will unlock once it takes a look at your face. So it's just really good in that way. Now when it comes to downloading your favorite apps, app downloads are much quicker on iOS 13 and the small app size downloads are also very quick as well and they're optimized for iOS 13. Now what we can do is go into the notes app 
And the new feature within any text field that you enter and you have your keyboard is the swipe keyboard. So let's say, for example, we want to type something using the swipe keyboard. We can just swipe. So I said thanks right there. So I said thanks for watching put an exclamation mark just like that. Uh, so I did that with the swipe keyboard. It's really convenient. It's been on Android for a while. And there also was a third party keyboard that you can install on your iPhone, but now it's built into the regular keyboard. So you don't have to install one more app and just waste your storage when it's uh, implemented within the iOS 13 software now, which is a good sight to see. Now the reminders app is also revamped. So if you take a look at it, you can see that it does have a different layout. Uh, so you have today's scheduled, all flagged, and then reminders. Uh, so so you can see that it's very organized and useful now. So what we can do is add a new list of reminders. So let's say, for example, we press add list. Uh, let's say video ideas, hit done. So now we'll have a new list. So those are my lists for video ideas. And now what we can do is add a new reminder, film a video about iOS 13. So you can have that reminder right there. Then you can add some more uh, functions to it so you can see that there's a location-based reminder and much more. Uh, and then what I can actually do is type at 10 p.m. And now you're going to see that it's actually going to highlight the 10 p.m. part and now it will automatically set it for 10 p.m. since it's very uh, cognizant of what you're writing. And since there is a time in it, it will automatically set it to that time. Now the next new feature about iOS 13 is in the Photos app. So if we take a look at the bottom of the Photos app, you're going to see that we now have a new tab that has years, month, days, and all photos. So we'll categorize all your photos and important events based on that chronological order. Uh, so that's really nice to see. So you just tap on any one of these and it'll automatically show you uh, the photos that pertain to that particular set. So now if we find a photo that we want to edit, we can just simply tap on it. And then what we can do is just press on edit. And then once we tapped on edit, we're going to see that you have a bunch of features for this particular photo. So then what I can do once I tapped on edit is just scroll all the way to the right. So you have exposure, brilliant, highlight, shadows, contrast, brightness, uh, black point. Uh, there's just a bunch of different effects that we can add to it. So it's definitely a great site to see that Apple added all these different effects that we can add to our photos. And you can also edit video as well. Uh, so what we can do is just take a quick video. This is a test video about iOS 13, and here's a look at my Apple Watch on my wrist as well. So now I can see the video is playing automatically, might I add, and now what we can do is actually edit it. So you can just tap on edit, and now you can see that we have all these different effects. So you can see that there's a yellow dot right under the uh, camcorder icon. So if we tap on the volume, you have a choice to mute the video uh, itself. You can also tap on this if you want to uh, take it straight to iMovie as well. And then we have all the different effects as well. So it's just really nice to see that right there. And you can just focus and highlight on certain parts of the footage. So you can do it all within the app without going into iMovie. You can also add a bunch of uh, effects to it. So you can see that you can just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. So those are the effects that you can have. You can put a nice tint filter as uh, so you just hit done. Now, if we take a look at it, we'll have a slight tint filter if we take a close look to it. So the autoplay feature is definitely a new feature in iOS 13. Now Safari also did get a nice update. So if you go into Safari, and then you can see we're in Google right now. So it's talking about iOS 13. But if we take a look in the top left corner, you can see it has an uppercase A and a lowercase A. So you tap on it. And now we have the option to uh, show the reader hide the toolbar, request desktop site, website settings. You can just tap on the uppercase uh, A and we'll just zoom in and we can just tap it again and again. You get the point, so we'll just zoom in. Uh, so it's pretty zoomed in right now, but now we can just tap on the smaller A to get it back to 100%, so that's pretty normal. And now uh, if we tap on the share button, 
Under the share button, it will analyze how you use your device. So if you text a lot of people, it will just uh, use machine learning and AI to analyze who you talk to the most and who you're likely to send a particular article to. It's a nice new feature. And now you can see that we have airdrop messages, mail reminders, and all your apps that you use the most. So it just analyzes how you use your device and tracks uh, what you're more likely to do and the percentages and odds and everything like that. Then you have the copy, add to home screen, add to reading list, add to uh, add bookmark, add to favorites, create PDF, print, find on page, and more. Uh, so those are your options uh, in the Safari uh, share feature. Now we can tap on this A again, and then we can see that you have the show reader view. We can hide the toolbar. We can request the desktop site and then website settings. So if we go into website settings, you're going to see that we have some new website settings for iOS 13. So that includes request desktop website, use reader automatically, and then allow Google.ca to access camera, microphone, and location. It can prompt it to ask you, or you can change it to uh, something else. So you can just tap on it. Then we can just change it to ask, deny, or allow. So you have all those different options in Safari. So those are the main uh, features that were added. Now the next feature is in the notes app. Now if we go into the notes app and we tap on the pen right here, you're going to see that we have uh, all the different types of pens and it's nice to see that there's a different uh, array and options and it looks a little different compared to iOS 12. So you can see that there's a ruler and we can just uh, change it up a bit. So there's a lot of nice new and useful functions in the notes app. Now the quick path keyboard that you can swipe on will just definitely shine in the notes app. So uh, that's just the main feature of the notes app that you'll definitely realize. And you can just type a lot faster and I could just say, hi, what's up? And just using the swipe feature, which is new in iOS 13. Now the main complaint about iPhones when they're introduced a decade ago was that annoying volume rocker. Uh, so if I take a look at my iPhone 10s Max on iOS 12, you're going to see that if I turn the volume rocker on, it's going to take up the middle of the screen and it's just really annoying if I was watching video or if I'm just using my phone in portrait mode, it just is super annoying. Now in iOS 13, you can take it to silent mode with this rocker on the side right here. And now you're going to see it's just right at the top. So silent mode on, silent mode off, silent mode on, silent mode off. You get the point. So you probably thought that was it just for the uh, silent mode. You can turn it on, turn it off then it'll just show right at the top. But that's not all. Because with the volume on iOS 12 and previous iterations of iOS, you're going to see that uh, when we turn on the volume, you can see it's right in the middle again. Uh, so it's just the annoying part of iOS. But now if we take a look at my iPhone XS on iOS 13, you're going to see that volume is at the side and it's very convenient. Uh, so when you first uh, take a look at it, you'll see it'll take up more screen and then it will go down and to just a nice little line. So now we can do it again, and then you can turn the volume up like that if you catch it in time. But then if we turn up the volume, then we miss it, it's just gonna go to that small piece right over here. So now the volume is not obtrusive as it once was. So now we can just compare it, and now you can see the difference. And now you can just turn off the volume rocker, turn it on, turn it off, it's right in the middle. But now if we do it on the iOS 13 device, you're going to see it's just right at the top, right there. So you can see that's the big difference. Now, Apple does say that Siri is a lot better, but it basically sounds the same. They said that they improved the uh, voice recognition and the machine learning and that Siri is more human-like. But to me, Siri does sound the same. Hey, Siri, tell me a joke. I could tell you a joke I heard from my watch but that would be second-hand information. Ha ha ha, Siri, very funny. But you can see that Siri does sound the same and Apple really didn't change Siri in iOS 13 beta 1 at least, but hopefully when iOS 13 actually drops in September, it will be changed by then. Now, a new option throughout iOS 13 is sign in with Apple, which will be much safer than signing in with Facebook and Google. And all your important information will now be encrypted and protected from uh, Google and Facebook using it for tracking purposes. Uh, so now sign in with Apple looks really good and it can have uh, a sign in with Apple temporary email as well. So we'll just go to that and it's just integrated very well. It was made a major point in the WDC uh, keynote. We go into Siri shortcuts. 
you're gonna see that the series shortcuts did get updated. It's definitely very useful now than it already was, and it's only gonna get better and be a major part of Apple devices. And Siri shortcuts is now automatically installed, and you don't have to go into the App Store and then look for shortcuts. It's just nice that they included it. Now, if you go into Find My, Find My is an app that now uses Bluetooth to find your iPhone, your iPad, your MacBook Pro, especially. So it just definitely got a much needed update and it's just as realistic as possible. And it will track the location to the T with Find My. And I highly recommend that you have it. It's just the evolution of Find My iPhone. It's just Find My any iDevice now pretty much. So it got a much needed upgrade. Now, Apple Maps is a lot better. Now, Apple Maps has a new collection of places and things you can do. Now, Apple Maps is also improved. So you have your home uh, location, your work location. You can add some more favorite locations. You have my places under collections and you can create a new collection. You have your mark location right there as well. And now Apple really focus on adding a new street view and there's more in-depth maps. Apple did say that they're doing their own street view across all of the locations, just like Google did with street view. Uh, so it's really nice that Apple improved it. The maps are more accurate and they're really trying to put their best foot forward and compete with Google maps. So now we can take a look at the 3D maps that Apple has, or you could just switch it to 2D. Uh, so you can see that Apple is getting much better with their maps, uh, for example, so you can see uh, the Toronto skyline. Now, last but not least is iMessage. So now with iMessage, you can have your own Me Emoji. So you just tap on this button right here for your Me Emoji. Uh, so you can see it right there. And now you can add your own. So you just create your own Me Emoji. Then you can implement it within the actual uh, messaging app. Now our Me Emoji can also have AirPods as well. So that's a nice new feature that they added. And that's what people have been talking about. And now if we tap on that Me Emoji button, you can see that uh, there's that Me Emoji tab right there and can scroll and see all the facial reactions and expressions that your uh, Me Emoji has right there. So that's uh, definitely something new. And uh, you can also have it as a contact photo and say when you're texting somebody and they don't have you in as a contact, your me emoji or your whatever contact photo will pop up uh, kind of like a profile picture in the Messenger Facebook app. Now, the last new feature is in Apple Music. So if you go into the Apple Music app and you find a song that you like, so say, for example, Hotline Bling. When you play Hotline Bling, it'll give you an option to uh, sing along with the lyric. So that's a nice feature that they added and they just synced it up with the music pretty well now. Uh, so that's the final feature. And the Apple Music layout does look a little bit different when you're playing a song. Uh, so if you go into Now Playing, you're going to see that it's slightly different. You're going to see that you have uh, the HomePod uh, and other Apple accessories support right there for your AirPods. And then you have the overall layout right there. And then you can uh, type right here to see some more information about the song that you're currently playing. Then you can just go ahead and go back to it. And if you have your AirPods in while you're playing a song and you have a friend sitting beside you on, uh, let's say, for example, in class or on the bus, what you can do is share the song by putting your iPhone right beside the other iPhone like this. And then you'll share the song that you're currently playing from your AirPods into another device uh, just like that. So it's just a really nice feature in the music app. Uh, so that is the iOS 13 Roundup. So thanks for watching this video on the iOS 13 hands-on. Please be sure to subscribe to like this video. Please smash the like button down below so you watch. Also be sure to check out all the other videos on my channel. Be sure to check out AppleCritics.com for these Apple News use and more. Like my Facebook fan page at Facebook.com slash AppleCritics. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at Instagram.com slash AppleCritics or at AppleCritics. And you'll get a lot of the behind the scenes, a lot of giveaways, a lot of uh, great posts on my Instagram. You're definitely not going to want to miss it. And I do post on the story a lot and I will be going live. Uh, so just be sure to follow me on Instagram at AppleCritics. And be sure to follow me on Twitter at Twitter.com slash AppleCritics. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.